What's going on, y'all? So What's going on, y'all? Oh, girl, why my face look? Okay, anyway, we ain't gonna even worry about that. Girl, y'all been waiting long enough. Um, mm -mm. It look like I got dark marks. It's just the way the lighting is or whatever. Um, so, you know, and plus I'm tired. But anyway, we are back. We are back. We are back for the Oval Season 4, Episode 21, Pins and Needles. And let me just say this. I feel some type of way, okay? I honestly feel some type of way because of the fact that this episode of The Oval was 10 times better than the episode of Sisters, okay? Now, usually I would suspect and expect that Sisters would be better, you know what I'm saying? Just because, you know, but for some reason, this episode was giving, all right? Um, meaning that I was not bored with it. You know, I actually watched it twice. I watched it once at work and I watched it on my way here and the rest here when I get here, you know, just so I can go over some things with y'all. Um, again, thank you guys for understanding what's been going on. Cause y'all, y'all truly know that I hate, I absolutely hate doing reviews this late. You know what I'm saying? But, um, <clears throat> Y'all understood the circumstances, so I appreciate that nobody was really hounding me for. So, thank you. Mm, I had to moisture my palate. Girl. Anyway, so we get up into the episode. It picks up where I left off last week uh, with Sharon over there at Kareem house. Girl, after Sharon and Kareem got into that little tussle, okay? And I said, you should have one, two, three him up in the balls or whatever. Um, She actually threw him into the, uh, you know wooden table and he wind up falling and all of that and oops my bad that's what you get you know what i'm saying and i said dang did he fall on something did he hit his head or whatever like to be quite honest when i look back at it um it didn't look like she really pushed him that hard that he would fall on the table and then die <laughs> Is he really did? Let me tell you something. This episode of The Ovals was looking like the uh, season finale, the series finale of The Haves and the Have Nots, when everybody and their mama was getting it. I said, wait a minute, what's going on? But I wasn't mad at it. I really wasn't mad at it. You know what I'm saying? You know, certain things made sense a little bit. But I was like, dang, Sharon really killed, uh, uh, pushed him that hard? You pushed him. She pushed you that hard that hard okay i said he must have hit his head i'm sitting here like dang did one of the legs break off and pierce his skin or whatever did he i'm thinking that he was just knocked unconscious girl at this point let me tell you where sharon messed up at because we just gonna get her whole storyline out the way sharon messed up by um getting on the phone with dale while she was still up in the house okay sharon messed up also further even if she was gonna call dale and let him know what was going on or whatever um, she messed up further when she picked up the phone and called the cops while she was still in the house. That's where she messed up at. Now, if Kareem was telling you, I don't want to call the cops because I don't know what they're going to say to me, you know, even though, and here you go, holier than thou. Well, I ain't going to say holier than thou. You was righteous. You was trying to be on the right side of the law. You know what I'm saying? You was like, listen, Kareem, if you didn't do nothing, you know what I'm saying? You, you, you ain't got nothing to worry about. Just go ahead and call the cops. Sharon, did you really do something? You ain't got nothing to worry about, so let me go ahead and call the cops. And that's exactly what you did. And look what happened to you, girl. Look what happened to you. So, um, Dale was up in the, uh, you know, up at the pharmacy or whatever, right? So, he gets on the phone with her. And she was like, he was like, Sharon, what's going on? And she was like, Dale. Dale. Ah! I said, uh-uh, uh-uh. I would have hung up the phone, okay? I would have hung up the phone. I don't remember who called who. That really don't matter. Don't get on the phone screaming in my ear like that, okay? Making my senses go up extra high and all that stuff. And I'm trying to figure out what's going on. Meanwhile, I'm up in this pharmacy taking care of the whole shop because everybody is evading their god darn responsibilities, okay? Kareem, you supposed to be down here doing your little drug empire and everything. And I'm up here, got to uh go through all this stuff because Antonio came over there to him and was like, yo, what's good? Where's the rest of the drug? You know what I'm saying? Where's the Jacob Stallwork account? I seen that you gave it all out or whatever. Where is it? I said, well, if you didn't already see that it ain't there, 
it ain't there. Baby, he was like, go underneath the cabinet and give me that box down there. Um, Dale said, first of all, I don't know you. Second of all, this Kareem shop. And um, unless he told me to do some stuff, I ain't doing it. Third of all, I just got here, so I don't know nothing about what y'all doing. So um, I don't know you, Mr. Antonio. I don't care if you a uh, Kareem cousin or not. He ain't tell me nothing about this, so I ain't touching nothing. I ain't finna reach down to no get no box, but what I will do is I'll come up with this tummy gun. I said, excuse me, Mr. Um, Dale. Now, see, Dale did tell us earlier, like a few episodes ago, when Kareem uh, wanted to go all Rambo on uh, hunting them. And he brought that bag of, uh, you know, weapons or whatever. He was like, yeah, I know how to use the stuff and all that. Okay, cool, little country boy. You know what you're doing, right? Uh, Antonio was like, listen, uh-uh, we're not finna do that. We're not finna do that. He said, get out, get out. He was like, no, listen, uh-uh, I just need the stuff. I just need the stuff. You don't understand. This is the Mexican cartel. I said, oh, no. Oh, no. Did y'all hear the stuff that was happening with that? Now, and let me pause this for a second, and I'm only bringing it up because he brought it up. But y'all heard about the story that was going around about the four black Americans that went from North Carolina down to Mexico so that um, one of them can have some cosmetic or, you know, elective surgery down there for cheap, right? And they wound up getting the cost of attacked and uh, kidnapped by these Mexican cartels, right? Um, two of them, unfortunately, was killed, um, and there was only two survivors, right? Girl, how come all of this happened probably over the weekend today? Why they sent the letter in? I said, first of all, since when does the Mexican cartel have a goddamn HR part, uh, department? Because they got an HR department and a PR department because they said, baby, this don't look right on our parts. We up here kidnapping innocent Americans and stuff. Okay, listen, this is the people that was involved in it. They went against our rules because our rules is that we do not do nothing like this. We do not touch civilians. We do not touch innocent people. Okay, that is not uh, for us or whatever. I said, how dare y'all have morals when y'all out here just taking everybody out anyway? Oh, they got to have to been done something for you to take them out. I said, child, since when does cartel send that to the, uh, to the, uh, to the police station or whatever? And then had a handwritten note too. I said, um, excuse me, excuse me, the way that this was solved so swiftly. Meanwhile, we still can't get, um, justice for Shanquilla. All right. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Do we need to get the cartels on that to speed up that process? Like, what's going on, baby? You know, moving on from that. Um, Mr. Deli said, I, I, Del the Stallion said, listen, baby, I don't, I, don't, I don't care. Okay. I got a bad hair day and I just don't give up right now. Mind you, he was over because that lady that was there, first of all, you know, he handled that the same way that I be at work. I be like, listen. Yesterday, speaking of, Dale told that lady, um, we are close. We are, you got to go. Um, you know, she was like, oh, well, I ain't know because I ain't seen nobody up in here. But let me just put my um, prescription in. He said, no, you're going to have to come back tomorrow because we are close. I was like, well, what type of joint is this that Kareem is running? I ain't never coming back here. I'm taking my services elsewhere. Dale said, Okay. And she was like, well, open up the door. He pushed that thing open and said, it's already open. <laughs> said, what? Dale was us yesterday at work. I got off of work at six o'clock yesterday. We announced at 30 minutes before we closed, 15 minutes before we closed, and five minutes before we closed that we're about to close. There's one particular person that always comes in and he is um, an unhoused person. And, um, you know, he is a drug user, right? He decided to get high right around the time that we supposed to close to the point that he was so out of it. We're trying to wake him up. We are past six o'clock and my co-workers, the boss and another co-worker and the security guard had to stay back because they had called the ambulance. They had called the fire department, all of that to come and try to see what was going on because we literally just experienced somebody overdosing in the bathroom a couple of weeks ago. You know what I'm saying? And they literally had to take him out of a stretch out on the stretcher. And um, we was like, oh my goodness, are we about to do this again? Because when I tell you they was trying to wake him up, they was trying to wake him up and get him out of here. Girl, he won he won't budge. I mean, they was screaming, they was pushing, they was nudging. Nothing was happening. I said, What in the world? So you saw the frustration Dale had. 
I know something was going on, girl, but I was still standing there like this. Ain't this about something? <laughs> I'm ready to go home. You know, like, it was just irritating. And we had people like that just, just want to stay behind knowing darn well we closed. Okay? So, Dale, I understood your pain. All right? And then you're going to get on the phone with Sharon and she's screaming all up in your ear and you can't tell her what's going on because she can't tell you what's going on because she all hysterical. Now you got to go out there and see what's going on with her. And then Antonio coming up there trying to take you out or whatever and, 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 and tell you some stuff that you don't know. Listen, I don't know nothing about nothing. Okay, you can get the fuck out. I'm gonna have somebody gonna have you have to open up the door. He said it's already unlocked. They don't want playing no games. I said, all right, Mr. DeLeon, you better do that. Del DeLeon Cortez. That's what he turned into, boo boo. I said, all right, you know. Um, meanwhile, so Sharon, she gets on the phone and calls cops. Why she do that? Sharon, you should have just left. You should have just left and you should have wiped your pranger pants. Listen, let me tell you this, okay? Y'all see something, <clears throat> first of all, especially if they are already said to be missing, you can't find where they at, not necessarily reported, but you know, people looking for them and you can't find where they at, and then you see and find a piece of their uh, items or whatever personal effects, and, and don't touch it. Don't touch it, okay? This is what Sharon messed up in the beginning. She touched the uh, Barry phone. Now, baby, I would have moved it, and I would have just called. As soon as I seen the phone that had blood on it or whatever, I would have been like, oh, what is this? And then I would have looked down. I would have said, let me see. Do, 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 do. Hmm. Oh, my God, it's freaking. That's so-and-so. Let me put this back, and let me dip on up out of here, okay? That's what she should have did. But then mama going to get on the phone and call the cops. And the cops, well, the 911 operator was like, we already sending somebody to your house. And she was like, what? They was like, yeah, two people done called it in already. So Dale called it in from the pharmacy. And then um, a neighbor had called it in because they heard the ruckus that was going on. So Dale had popped up as soon as she was on the phone with the uh, pharmacist. I mean, uh, the uh, 911 operator. Conveniently. And she was like, oh my God, Dale. Oh my God, Dale. Girl, as soon as he get up in there trying to assess what's going on, here come the cops, okay? The cops come through and basically was like, what happened, you know? And, and, and the fact that they, I feel some type of way, the fact that they went straight to Sharon and they was ready to cuff her anyway. I said, now, how come you think that she had something to do with it automatically? Oh, uh, Dale could have did something. What is that about? Is that a little bit of profiling? But then again, no, you know, I'm just being silly. Um... Girl, they took Sharon in. They was about to handcuff her ass. I said, now, see, look at you. You didn't got yourself arrested. You didn't got yourself arrested because they t they said murder. I said, what? They said homicide. I said, huh? I said, so she pushed him into that wooden table and he died like that. I mean, blunt, for blunt force trauma to the head. But, wow, Kareem, that's how you're going to go out. I said, Tyler, so you just taking out all the Sharon niggas, huh? Meanwhile, we get over there to um, Nancy and them house. Girl, this the one I wasn't expecting, but I don't think she gone, okay? Nancy over there playing on them stairs like she three years old. And I wanted to say, get down, sit your ass down. That's what I really wanted to say, you know what I'm saying? Priscilla just sitting there looking like this. What the hell did I get myself into? I said, girl, I don't even know. I don't even know at this point. You know, you got me. Okay, you you, you tell me what's up. Baby, Nancy came down them steps and she was like, see, I can breathe. I'm not even out of breath. The um, highest, he healed me. You mean he really healed you like for real, for real? She said, I mean, well, he not Jesus, but look, I feel good. I feel great. I can breathe. I said, all right. And, you know, she was like, okay, Miss Nancy, y'all want to go to bed or whatever you want to eat? I ain't going to eat that food or whatever up in the kitchen. You know, you you, you know, um, if they going to tell me where they hurt Barry at, you know, maybe I should uh just go ahead and, 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 and take my... She was like, maybe if I can be with him, I can be a better mother or something like that. And as soon as she said that, I said, now, that's odd. That's odd. You know, Priscilla trying to tell her, no, 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 you were a good mother. I said, don't lie to her. Please don't lie to her. In her late years, mm, that we didn't seen to these four seasons, no, she has not been. But that's neither here nor there. I said, excuse me, Miss Lady, what's going on? Girl, at one point, she was like, 
Listen, don't even talk to me and don't tell me nothing. Don't touch me. I'm going to go to bed. Okay. She was like, all right, you want me to take you upstairs? Priscilla reached over there to try to help her or whatever. She said, don't touch me. Uh-uh. I don't need you touching on me. Okay. What? You trying to sleep with me? I'm married, okay? Priscilla said, she was like, no, you trying to sleep with me? She said, girl, no. Nah. She said, because I don't go that way. And she was like, neither do I. And then Nancy said, and I'm married. Priscilla said, I am too. And she said, uh, at least I'm happy, okay? I am happy in my marriage. I said, well, you know what? How is it that you has hell and your brain chemistry all messed up right about now, but you still shady as all heck? I said that. See, Miss Nancy, that was not necessary. That was not necessary. And then you went and did this. I said, excuse me. <laughs> what was that? That was to snap her back into reality and be like, oh my God, what's going on with you and Sam? Are y'all okay? I said, you will not shave my marriage. You will not shave me and then ask me how he doing and then call him a bitch. <laughs> I was laughing so hard. I said, girl, what? But eventually she went upstairs and she said, girl, I'm finna go to sleep or whatever. Girl, Richard came home. Priscilla said, listen, your wife upstairs, she's sleeping. You going to go up there and you going to talk to her or whatever? He said, no, nah, she'll like sleep. I'll go up there later. Girl, by the time later came up there, Nancy was, um, you know, hanging. Trigger one. I should have told y'all that at the beginning. She was on the door. I said, now, who put her up there and where the stool at if she did it herself? How she get up there and she yanked herself up there? Baby, Tyler Perry has this way of you have to think about stuff and it makes you think other things, you know, like, uh, uh, how did she get up there? Did somebody else come and do that? When 9 out of 10, she probably did it herself because she's just so out of her mind. But at the same time, it was like, was it a stool sitting there that uh, she was able to stand up there and she kicked away? Was it a chair that she was able to get up there? Like, how did all of this happen? Did she jump off of the dresser or whatever and do this thing? I was really confused how she was hanging from that door like that. I said, oh, no. But see, on the preview for next week's episode, which is the season finale, um... She was being wheeled out on a stretcher, not in a body bed, but on a stretcher. So I'm going to assume that Nancy is going to survive, hopefully, okay? Um, meanwhile, we get over there to uh, Eli, girl, Eli and, some, uh, and, and Veronica, well, not Veronica, Victoria. They up there kept caking on the phone. And did you notice Veronica's, mm, Victoria's? Uh, uh, body language while she was talking to him and the facial expressions and it's like she's playing him. Am I the only one getting that same feeling and thought that you know Eli really in love with her? She's just saying that to get him on her side because every time she says certain things, she'll roll her eyes and all this stuff. And then all of a sudden, she's like, um, because she was telling them about the fact that they found, um, they close to finding Jason and all of that. Woo, woo, woo. But then at the end of their conversation, after she tried to get him to come back to the White House to have sex with her and then talking about some... You know, I wish I could have married you instead of Hunter because she told her, told him that Hunter was out here, you know, doing all the drugs or whatever, doing on the bench, right? And uh, she was like, what if we take out, wouldn't it be something if both of our spouses died and we got together or whatever? And it was just the way that she was just like, you know, like, uh, her facial expressions were saying, uh, like I'm tired of talking to this man, but I'm just doing this just so I can keep him on my side. And then going to say, why don't you tell me you love me? Because then she was like, your wife there, she there. She knew she was coming. She knew she was coming because she showed up right then and there. You know, and I was just like, huh, what is going on? Meanwhile, she they hung up the phone, right? And so Simone was like, she comes up in there. First of all, Simone, you look good. She, you look good, all right? You look good, good, good. And I said, Eli, you're going to turn that down. You was literally about to get your butt up and go over there to the White House and play games with Miss Veronica. Ooh, Victoria, I should say. I shouldn't have brought up the halves and the half nuts because now I keep on thinking about getting my V's, uh, v names uh, switched up. But you was about to go over there and do a trek to go play around with Victoria. But, Chad, you got all of that chocolate goodness right there. I said, baby, I don't get it. That. I would not be wasting that at all. I would have been like, Tin Hut, <laughs> what you want me to do? Move it on the damn. Get on this desk. 
right there, okay? That would have been me. But she was like, you know, I put this on. You know, I'm trying to give you a little something, something. And he was like, babe, I was at work all day. I'm a little bit tired. I said, you tired? Get untied, okay? You trying to keep up appearances that you are not doing nothing. Baby, if your wife wants you to do something, do it, okay? And that's why she said, so who the hell you was on the phone with? Now, see, this is where Eli's dumb at. Because Eli gonna say, uh, cause when she, when she, when he heard that she was coming in, he made sure to say John, you know, but didn't I realize that she heard when he said, I love you to Victoria. Right. And she was like, I heard you talking. What, what you on the phone talking to, on, uh, to some woman who the hell you was on the phone talking to. And he was like, I was talking to John. I want to talk to no woman. You telling John that you love him. No, you was telling some woman that you loved her. He said, I love y'all. She said, your Harvard educated say never said y'all before. I said, I know that's right. It don't even sound right coming out your mouth. And um, I was sitting here like, Eli, you could have said, that was my cousin. That was my sister. That was my mama. That was my auntie. Why you didn't say none of them, boy? I was just like, oh my God, you, you're not experienced at cheating or whatever. You always got caught if you did. This must be your first time. Okay. Not that I know anything about that. I'm just saying, but if I did, I'd do it better than that. That's why they say women are better cheaters than men. And speaking of, Hunter, 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 he tells Alonzo, you know, that he come out the room, woo, woo, I said, you so extra, you are so extra. He liked the drugs and he want Alonzo to get him some more and them to go out together. I said, mm. Now, see, let me tell you something. So, we was having a debate up in the comments about, you know, the reason why. Because I said, Alonzo, that scene with him um, taking the drugs or whatever and then um, doing all of what he did to Dale, it just didn't make sense. And people was like, a couple of people was like, uh, it's probably because he couldn't pay for the drugs or whatever. He wasn't there to pay for no drugs. Alan had already set it up for him to just go there to get it. Okay? Um... He took that in his own hands. He was not supposed to do none of that stuff, okay? Because when Alan and him, Alan and him's relationship a little bit weird. I'm not saying, it's it's like homoerotic, you know what I'm saying? They like bromance or something because, you know, the way that they be so close to each other and all up in their face. And I was like, are y'all finna kiss or something? Yeah, you got the stuff? Yeah, I got the stuff. Yeah, I gave him some of it. Yeah, I'll meet you back at your place. I'm like, back the fuck back. Why am I breath? Your breath and my breath tangling together like this, okay? And we ain't even finna tongue wrestle. What is going on with that? You know, it was just a little weird, you know. Um, But at the same time, um, Alonzo, he did all of that for no reason because of himself. And I feel like what the reason why he did it, truthfully, is because he living on the edge and he playing around with Mr. President. And because he already got him doing all this crazy stuff, now he addicted to the adrenaline rush of the adventure of it. Because he didn't have to do that. And truth be told, he didn't have to take all the package. He was supposed to pick up one package. He went behind the thing and got all of them. Because that's what Antonio was saying. The whole Jacob Star Wars stash is gone. You know? And that just wasn't supposed to happen. He was supposed to pick up one stash, right? And um, Antonio winds up calling Alan and telling him, uh, your boy came up in there and he stole everything. Um, he took some of the hard drives. He left one of them. And I got my own stuff set up back there. So I saw him on the cameras taking everything. And he wasn't even supposed to do that. And so, uh, Alan had to confront Alonzo. And I'm sitting here like, Alonzo, why are you lying? Why are you lying? Okay? He just lying his butt off until he just said, you know what? I'll get it back with her. My bad. He didn't even care when he told him that it was the Mexican cartel. I said, child, Alonzo finna come up in here and just mess up everybody's stuff. <laughs> Meanwhile, Jason up there, uh, Sam and old boy David. He telling him his people outside, you know, basically they compromise. And that's what David wound up telling Jason and going back and forth whether or not he going to give him a gun or whatever. I said, don't get that boy a gun. He going to wind up shooting you. Um, Kyle gets on the phone, tell Donald that they got eyes on them, um, but they're not sure of the identity. And Donald said, I don't care. Do what you got to do. And then Cal brings up this, uh, I guess, another operation that they had previously where Cal jumped a, jumped the gun too quickly and an innocent woman or something, women got uh, killed. And so 
he is trying to be cautious and Donald like, so now you want to be cautious? I said, yes. He was like, go ahead and make it happen. That's what you need to do. I don't care if you don't get no um identification. If it's two dudes up in there, go ahead and, and, and mess it up. You know what I'm saying? I was like, oh, all right. Mind you, Donald was at home in his silk pajamas about to go to bed. I said, oh, okay, cool. Next thing you know, Brian comes into the house and talking to Lily. Lily like, what the fuck are you doing here? The secret service is about to, he said, they all put down. I said, oh, snap. I said, Lily, Lily, first of all, you got one person doing all this mess over you, about to go to war for you, and he done had your snatch up in the goddamn um, airport bathroom. Now you got this one about to risk his life because, first of all, he messed up his life. You know, Donald messed him up. So I understand the plot for revenge. But also, that little nasty kiss, it was kind of cute. It was kind of cute. Lily, you kind of felt the fever or whatever. I was like, uh-oh. I said, now, Brian, you about to do a um unalive mission because that's basically what it's going to be if you ever if you don't make it about that house. And Lily was trying to tell you, it's not too late to turn around. You're not going to make it about it here. And she, he was like, where's Donald? She was like, I don't, I don't. Hold up. Let me think about it. If I tell you where Donald at, that means I can get up out of here too. And my problems will be taken care of. You take him out. I just get up out of here and I leave. My family will be all right. Everything will be good. Oh, he upstairs in the bed. <laughs> and then she tried to play like, no, you ain't got to do that. He was like, listen, I'm going to go up there. I'm going to take him out. And if they come and get me or whatever, I'm going to just say that, you know, you ran away when you saw me come in and all that stuff. She was like, girl, they ain't going to believe that. They are not going to believe that. I know these people. Baby, all of a sudden, you just got through tongue dicking me down okay that's what he did he tongue dicked her down okay all up in the mouth and then at one point i said mr brian got a little bit too carried away now i know we was about to be on a little mission and i may or may not see you again so let me get this one and only kiss that we ever have right next thing you know while they was in the midst of kissing he started kissing on him i said baby we're not finna have sex right now we're not finna have sex right now we are on a time crunch she has to tell him hold up okay just hold the fuck up but then Next thing you know, you done did all that, got me all hot and bothered, and you gonna hit me in my face? I said, excuse me, god damn. <laughs> you know, he said, bang. Lily, you know, it really don't take much. It, I said, now, you didn't have to hit her that hard. You didn't have to hit her that hard, because Lily went down. I said, Lily, get up. Get up. She said, god damn. And he was like, now, go ahead and get your kind of go. Just tell them if they come across you, tell them that, you know, um, I went up there, I took care of Donald, and then you called me, you saw me or whatever, and, and, and you got to a fight or whatever, I beat you up and you left. That, all that stuff. I said, oh, okay. Girl, he creep, creep, creep up them steps. <laughs> Donald was up in that bed. I'm going to say this. Donald was up in that bed because I feel like it was a stunt double because I was looking at the face and it was somewhat of the same complexion or whatever, but it looked like the person had an earring up in their ear. But it did look like him from the back, but from the front, it really didn't. So, I'm going to say, Donald was up in that bed, right? Next thing you know, um, Mr. Brian came up in there and said, P -p 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 that body in that bed said, I said, oh, you was Harlem shaking up in that thing. I said, uh-uh, what's going on? He was on his side when he first came up in there. By the time he was finished, he was on his back like this. I said, oh, Donald is gone. I don't believe it, but Donald is gone. Hmm. How was it that he, I mean, I don't, if it is true, good riddance. But at the same time, it's like, that was too easy. You let a nobody that only been on the show for like two episodes come in and take Donald out. I at least thought Cal would have got jealous and suffocated him or something like that, strangled him out or something. I don't know. Like, you know, have an unfortunate asphyxiation accident doing sex. I don't know, because they nasty like that. And that's good nasty, but they nasty like that. So, I mean, it was just a little bit too easy. I don't think that was, I'm, I mean, it was a guy in the same silk pajamas as Donald. And that was the episode, y'all. I said, oh, so we took out Kareem. We took out Donald. We also took out Nancy a little bit. She probably be back next week. Who else got taken out in this episode? I don't know. 
Okay. Um, it, it, it was cute. It was cute because I wasn't expecting. Mind you, they had put that um message up about it was going to be, you know, just a trigger warning because it was going to be an image about, you know, underlapping yourself. And I said the whole time I was thinking, I was like, who finna underline themselves? What? Mm. And then when we found out who it was, I said, God damn. Girl, go flush her system out. I said the doctors couldn't give her an IV to flush that shit out. Sober her up. Sober her up. Get her brain chemistry back together. Nancy said, I said, oh, no, girl. No, girl. But anyway, that was the over, y'all. It was cute. It was cute. I enjoyed the episode. I actually did. No lie. But um, y'all tell me how y'all feel. It is 9.15. I'm about to edit and watch SWV so I can go ahead and um, get this video up. Because I got a couple of things to say. But um, thank again. Thank y'all again, I should say, for bearing with me and staying with me. I really do appreciate it. I was on the phone with my mom for like an hour and a, almost two hours at work. And she had the nerve to act like, Ugh, oh my God, we've been on the phone for, I, I said, girl, and your point. Get off the phone. Oh, you just want me to get up off the phone and then gonna tell me to call me later. Call me tomorrow. I said, all right. All right. I said, but mind you, you rushing me off the phone, but she was the main one doing all the talking. Parents be crazy. But anyway, I will see y'all later, okay? Peace.